All right, we have our bias stems made. And so now I'm going to show you how I actually based these down onto the base fabric for this design. So here's what it's going to look like. And the idea is I want my cables to be evenly spaced. This idea of marking your fabric with creases and marking the edges of it is really what I use for all of the different types of, ap types of applique that I do. In this case, this is going to be machine applique. So the first step you want for machine applique is to actually stiffen up your base fabric. So this is my base fabric. I cut it an inch larger all the way around than I actually need the final design to be. And then I'm going to spray size it. So I've already spray sized this so it's a little bit stiff. Now, to be able to get the design to be evenly spaced, one of the techniques is to just crease the fabric. So I'm going to fold it and fold it and fold it and then start pressing and really press it with a really hot steam iron so the creases are really going to be noticeable and then I'm going to fold it one more time so now I will have a crease that'll go all the way down the middle of the border that I'm making lots of steam boy is it hot in here all right so now when I unfold this you can see those creases. Those are going to be the registration marks that are going to help me place my design where I want it. Now I want to place the, uh, mark the edges of the design. One error that a lot of people make when they're doing applique, whether, or not it be, whether it be by hand or by machine, is they oftentimes put the design so close to the edge that when it comes time to trim the design down to their desired size, the applique is too close to the edge. So I don't want to make any errors there. So for this design, I like to use my ruler and my marking pencil and mark an inch and a half all the way around the design. And down here. After I've got the outside edges of my base fabric marked. Now it's time to mark the inside edges. So I have the creases, so at least I know that my cable will be evenly spaced. But now it's going to be a matter of where is that cable going to crisscross on the design. Here I want them to crisscross together. Here I want them to come to the outside. So I want every other intersection to be marked. So I'm just going to mark it with an X. Every other one. That's going to tell me where I'm going to make my crisscross on my cable. Here's all my cables that I already made, my bias stems. They're the quarter inch wide ones. I've got a lot to work with. And this is my favorite tool for be basting. This is Roxanne's basting glue, my favorite. It's been around for a long time. Um, they've repackaged it a, l a few times and I've gone through a few bottles of it basically because I don't clean out the nozzle and so it gets clogged. So I've always got a lot of glue handy, but for me the hardest part is keeping the, na the nozzle clear so the glue will come out. So just take extra caution and clean, follow the directions, honestly, that would probably work best. So with the new packaging, it comes with a short tip and a long tip. I really like the short tip for this technique. And I'm going to lay the dots of glue down in my design. I don't have to rush. I can take my time. It's okay for the glue to have dried a little bit. It's gonna make the bias stem stick a little bit better when I'm laying them down. So I'm just gonna create the design with the dots. Now, if you chose, you could actually draw the cable design out. I don't. I just don't think it's necessary. But if you really want to, go for it. You'll see that the dots I'm putting down are about a half inch apart. They don't have to be really close. This is very strong glue when it's dry. So you don't have to worry about your cable design coming unbasted. So a few more going on up to here and up to the other point. So using those creases, I know what my design is going to look like and I know where to bring the design to the edge and where to crisscross it. All right. So because I don't want it to clog, I'm going to put my top back on and I promise I'm going to wash it out later so it doesn't clog. All right. So now I take my stems. 
The idea of Celtic design is the unders and the overs. So I'm gonna create this design. I'm gonna start with some smaller strips so you'll see what I mean. I'm gonna lay this first design down. And this is gonna be my first under strip. Now, looking at this strip of, um, that I have here, I can go from this intersection to this next intersection, but I cannot go all the way to here. So I have to try and decide, do I cut it off here or do I continue it and make it be an under section here? I'm gonna cut it off here and you'll, I'll explain why. If I cut this off here, then I can take a new strip and lay it down. I don't have to sew the stems together. The stems are just gonna be butt right together underneath. Now I'm gonna take my next strip and lay it down. And now this is going to go over that raw edge intersection. That's why you don't have to sew all the stems together into big one long strip. And then I'll continue in that same way. So here, this is going to be an under section. I'll cut that off. I'd get another strip. Here, how about this one? Lay it down. And this one would be my over now. So now it's gonna cross over, covering up that raw edge. Now, because I'm not a very patient person, when I get it to be about this far, I grab my iron and that's gonna make the glue just dry a lot faster. Now this is one that I did about a week ago, getting ready to work on this. This has not been stitched down. This is just glued down. It's really strong. But what's really cool about this glue is that if you've made a mistake, you've put the design where you don't want it to be, you actually can just pop those dots right off. And if you can see the dot residue, the glue residue, you can just take a wet rag and wipe up that dot residue. And then you can change the design. Love doing the basting technique with the Roxanne's glue. Next time we get together, I'm going to talk to you about the machine applique stitch that I use for this technique. I hope you enjoyed the show. Thanks for watching our video. Be sure you subscribe to our channel. We wouldn't want you to miss a single one. Leave a comment. We would love to hear from you.